Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklet Educational Channel. So this is the part 13 for the Mark Booster series in the Environmental Science and Engineering paper for the GATE examination. Here we are going to discuss some of the important concepts which came in the previous exam and which have the probability to come in the next examination also. So get ready with your notes so that you can write down all the formulas, all the important concepts. And yes, if you haven't checked the playlist for this GATE Environmental Science and Engineering, you must watch that because that is very very important. The link will be provided in the i button as well as in the description below. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So here comes our first question. So from questions only we will discuss the concept. So the question was from the environmental chemistry no need to worry if you are weak in chemistry we will solve very easily with very very easy and simple concept so first of all read the question question is the oxidation states of nitrogen in nh4 plus no2 minus and no are what respectively so we have to find the oxidation state of nitrogen atom in these three molecules and ions so what we have to do before that we should know certain basics and the basics are you should note down usually the oxidation state of hydrogen is equal to 1 oxidation state of oxygen is usually minus 2 similarly the oxidation state of chlorine is minus 1 and fluorine is always minus 1 so these things you should note down and oxygen's oxidation state is plus 2 only with fluorine so these things you should note down Hydrogen ka 1 hota hai oxidation state usually. Oxygen ka hota hai minus 2. But in case of fluorine atom, if it is combining, then it will be plus 2. And chlorine usually is having minus 1 as the oxidation state. And fluorine as also minus 1 always. So here these things were important concept. Now we will solve this thing. So here we will take first case is NH4 plus. So here this plus symbol means it is the overall charge of NH4. Here given in this question. So here hydrogen we know oxidation state is how much it is plus 1 so 1 and 4 atoms are given h4 is there so we'll write 1 multiplied by 4 is equal to we'll know it later so here also we have to add for nitrogen oxidation state oxidation state of nitrogen we'll take it as x we don't know we'll find so x plus 1 multiplied by 4 is equal to how much is equal to plus 1 charge that is the overall charge that means we'll write down here 1 so here what will be x so that will solve x plus 4 is equal to 1. So here x will be minus 3. Very simple. So simple mathematics 1, 2, 3, 4. So x will be equal to minus 3. That means oxidation state of nitrogen in NH4 plus will be minus 3. So here in this option minus 3 is given in two options. So these two will be going to the final round. We will eliminate 1. So we will know 1 by 1. For NO2 minus we will find out the oxidation state of nitrogen. So we will write down NO2 minus. So here overall charge is how much? It is minus 1. Minus means minus 1. So here we know that oxidation state of oxygen is usually minus 2. So minus 2 multiplied by 2 atoms of oxygen are there. Here we will write it as equal to and here plus. That means plus here we will take it as bracket. Plus here we will take it as x as the oxidation state of nitrogen is equal to how much? It is minus 1 that is overall charge. So when we will solve this we will get as x plus minus 4 is equal to minus 1 so here x will be equal to how much x will be equal to minus 1 plus 4 equal to 3 so oxidation state of nitrogen in case of no2 minus is coming as 3 so that means here these two options are again having minus 3 minus 3 plus 3 plus 3 so we have to find out the last oxidation state of nitrogen in no in order to find the correct option so we'll find out very simple simple match no need to worry n o we will write overall charge is how much if it is nothing is given that means you will take it as it is zero don't think it is as one when it is given plus only it will be one but when it is not given anything it will be considered as the overall charge as zero so that is neutral so here overall charge equal to zero we'll write it down in rhs here oxidation state of oxygen we know minus two we'll write down and here plus x will take at nitrogen's oxidation state simply we will get x is equal to plus 2. Don't ask how it is because it is very simple x minus 2 is equal to 0 x is equal to plus 2. So here plus 2 is given in this option. So minus 3 plus 3 plus 2 are the respective oxidation states of nitrogen in NH4 plus NO2 minus and NO. 
very simple things i hope you have learned these things and you have noted down all these things so very easy now let's move on to the next question next question is on our screen from the previous year's questions only so the question is chlorine is most effective as a water disinfectant so we all know chlorine is a disinfectant for water at a ph of what level and the options are 6 8 10 and 12 so here we will know that how this chlorine is effective in cleaning the water that is also very important concept so when chlorine is added to water it gives hypochlorous acid yes hypochlorous acid then along with hcl it is released and then hypochlorous acid breaks down to hcl and nascent oxygen that is o in bracket so that is called as nascent oxygen and what happens is when the germs are attached to this nascent oxygen then the germs are oxidized and as a result the water is disinfected so here in order to carry all this process the effective ph is in between 5.5 to 7.5 so that means here what will be the answer option a because it comes under in between 5.5 to 7.5 that is 6 will be the ph that is the effective ph for the chlorine to disinfect the water and here you should also know that hypochlorous acid is 80 to 100 percent more effective in this ph range that means in order to give more nascent oxygen and the level of hypochlorous acid will decrease when the pH value is higher that means when you are going to 8 9 10 11 12 pH then hypochlorous acid will not break into HCl and nascent oxygen then what will happen the water will be not disinfected effectively this was the concept I hope you have noted down let's move to the next question so next question is also on our screen let us read it no need to worry by looking into this much of lines in this question very simple question the question is the united nations conference on environment and development that means it is talking about rio summit unced that was held in 1992 in brazil during this conference several environmental management principles were adopted by many countries so this question is asking which one of the following principles allows the government to take mitigation measures on the environmental issues having serious threats or irreversible damage even if there is scientific uncertainty about such issues so this is asking about which of the following principles were taken in the 1992 rio summit that allows the government to take the measures against the threats and issues for the environment even if there is no scientific certainty or scientific proof so then also we should go for the principle and what principle is that that principle is option number b that is precautionary principle so as a precautionary measure for the environment we have to take the measures in order to avoid any serious threats or irreversible damage for the environment even if there is scientific uncertainty about such issues and which principle states that the principle number 15 very important principle 15 of the 1992 rio declaration this suggests about precautionary principle so I hope you have noted down let's move on to the next question the next question is looking very simple and very clear let us read this very easy numerical the question is what is the pH of a water sample having hydrogen ion concentration of 10 milligram per liter where the atomic weight of the hydrogen is given as 1 gram per mole so here we will know very easy simple numerical formula I will tell you we all know from the school days that is pH is equal to minus logarithm of H plus ion concentration. Note down this one. Next is equal to as per the question minus logarithm of H plus ion concentration is given how much? It is given as 10 milligram per liter but we have to make it as gram. Yes, gram per liter will be the standard concentration. So we have to convert it into standard value that's why it is given here atomic weight is given in one gram per mole so it is a hint given to you that you should convert it into gram so in gram 10 will be given as 10 to the power minus 2 that will be the concentration in gram per liter in the concentration bracket closed is equal to how much is equal to minus 2 will come to the left hand side minus minus so minus of minus 2 log of 10 will be how much 
so minus minus plus so 2 multiplied by log 10 is equal to 1 2 into 1 is equal to 2 so answer will be option a 2 will be the ph of the water sample having the hydrogen concentration of iron as 10 milligram per liter but if it would have given 10 gram per liter then we would have taken as 10 only so here we have to convert it into gram that's why we are taking 10 to the power minus 2 so i hope this was chocolate question let's move on to the next question next question is coming up question is which of the following is or are both greenhouse gases as well as ozone depleting substances options are cfc11 carbon dioxide hcfc22 or nitrous oxide that is n2o so i'll give you certain seconds then i'll reveal the answer this is actually multiple select question more than one options are correct so here i will tell you the answer that option a c d all these three that is cfc11 hcfc22 nitrous oxide all these three are greenhouse gases along with that they are also having the ozone depleting potential they are harmful for the ozone layer and we will also know that according to the formula that is cfc11 what is its global warming potential for taking into consideration as 100 years lifetime it is 4660 approximately similarly you should note down cfc12 the global warming potential is 10200 cfc113 is 5820 and hcfc22 the global warming potential is 1760 and you should also note down that nitrous oxide many of you will be confused it is also an ozone depleting substance and the global warming potential for n2 is how much it is around 298 to 310 so that is the value i hope you have noted down all these things very important among these three highest is with cfc 12 global warming potential maximum followed by cfc 113 then followed by cfc 11 and finally at cfc 22 let's move to the next set of questions next question is coming up from the differential equation this is also important part in the gate environmental science and engineering paper question is very simple no need to worry if you don't know maths also I will read the question the ordinary differential equation which is given as dy by dx is equal to x square y has y as the dependent variable and x as the independent variable so the question is asking which of the following classifications is or are applicable to the equation so whether this equation is linear non-linear first order or second order this is also multiple select question more than one options will be correct think 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 about it so here the correct option will be option number a that is linear it is a linear equation along with that it is also first order equation so we'll know what is this linear and first order first order means there is only dy by dx will be given so here dy by dx is given it is not d square y by dx square which is second order d3 y dx cube this is also third order equation but in first order only dy by dx will be given in the equation so remember it like that very simple dy by dx is given here so it will be first order equation and linear how to check it is linear for first order differential equation it is linear it will look like this that means it will look like this equation dy by dx plus pxy is equal to qx so here this equation will also look like that how so if we write it in this form that is dy by dx plus pxy so here you will write it as x square y means here p will be considering as 1x and another x will be another x so x square both x square y will be considered as p x y equal to q x so, so here there is no q x value given so that means it will be zero here and in this way this is also justifying this equation so this equation is both linear as well as first order differential equation let's move to the next question next question is coming from the genetics very easy simple question the question is asking which of the following pairing of nucleotide bases is present in the double helix dna yes this paper is about environmental science and engineering but here they are also asking from the genetics part very simple question so here which one will be correct option b will be correct because adenine will match with thiamine and guanine will match with the cytosine so it is asking in the case of dna that's why uracil will be not here because uracil is the nucleotide which is present in the RNA not in DNA so note down in RNA thiamine is substituted as uracil but ATGC you should remember that means adenine will pair with thiamine and guanine with pair with the cytosine so how to remember this very simple trick apples in the tree 
AT apples in the tree adenine and thymine cytosine with guanine that means car in the garage so GCAT simple trick is apples in the tree car in the garage so I hope you have learned something new you have enjoyed the video you have noted down and you can join our telegram group for regular quizzes for environmental science and instagram page for the current affairs and regular updates so see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself